The Bandicoot has been saved, and this year, the dragon has been unleashed. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Spyro games. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're taking a look back at some of the best games our Purple Dragon has had since his debut in 1998. Number 10, Skylanders Spyro's Adventure. Okay, we know this game upset many Spyro fans, including us. Seriously, that redesign is just dreadful. However, as hard as it may be to believe, Skylanders is not a terrible game. Some of the characters are actually really well designed, and they each have their own unique moves to bring to the table. <laughs> Levels aren't too tricky either. Instead, Skylanders decides to keep things simple with its mechanics and puzzles, allowing anyone to have fun regardless of their skill level. With the decline of the toys to life genre, the Skylanders series is a lot cheaper than it used to be, and it's an entertaining game to play with your kids or younger siblings. Number 9, Spyro Attack of the Rhinox. At the time of this game's release, Spyro had just found his footing on the Game Boy Advance. With two games already made, Spyro Attack of the Rhinox did what every third Spyro entry did – go big or go home. As the third game on the GBA, Attack of the Rhinox successfully transitioned Spyro from a 3D adventure to a 2D adventure with an isometric view. It also packed in more content than the previous titles, giving players more worlds to explore and more quests to complete. Needless to say, we couldn't put our GBAs down when we got this one. Number 8. Spyro – Season of Ice Our purple dragon would have a rocky life on home consoles, but most of his handheld titles would prove to be terrific titles. The first of these would be Spyro Season of Ice, which admittingly doesn't do anything innovative. Nevertheless, it's a solid adventure for Spyro on such a small handheld. Levels are somewhat challenging, and the sound design and music are top-notch. It may be taxing when playing for an extensive period of time, but hardcore Spyro fans won't mind. After all, this was only the first Spyro game on a handheld, and it would be the start of a possibly promising future. Number 7. The Legend of Spyro – A New Beginning If you'd grown tired of the tried-and-true Spyro formula, chances are you picked up the reboot known as The Legend of Spyro – A New Beginning. As the title implies, this was a chance to bring Spyro into a new light, changing up the entire formula. Unlike previous titles, A New Beginning focused more heavily on combat, providing Spyro with a multitude of unique moves. As for the story, the game aimed for a more cinematic approach, and the voice acting was absolutely fantastic. It may not have looked like a Spyro game, but it certainly proved itself worthy to be called one. The time to fight will come, but it is not now. <sighs> I guess you're right. Let's go. Number 6. The Legend of Spyro – Dawn of the Dragon Hey, Spyro! Man, you're alive! Sparks! It's good to see you too. You okay? Uh, you know, a little stiff. Voice keeps changing, but I'm good. Serving as the final chapter in the Legend of Spyro trilogy, Dawn of the Dragon sought to expand upon the world it had established. Despite critics giving the game lukewarm scores, Dawn of the Dragon was a game many fans felt they'd been wanting for years. For the first time in the series, players could fly and freely explore open environments. 
Additionally, players could control both Spyro and Cinder throughout the campaign, both having their own set of elemental breaths. This chain is slowing us down. We can't fight it. We'll have to move in unison. Follow my lead. Why should you lead? Uh-oh. Take cover! Dawn of the Dragon may not have been a perfect game, but this was some of the most fun we had had in a Spyro game in a long time. Number 5. Spyro – A Hero's Tale Critics may have been a little harsh towards Spyro – A Hero's Tale, but for Spyro fans, this was an excellent experience. The story may not have been as strong as it could have, and the game wasn't exactly challenging. However, that wasn't what most players were excited for. A Hero's Tale allowed players to control four other playable characters – Sparks, Hunter, Sergeant Bird, and Blink the Mole – and they each provided unique sections of the game to keep things fresh. For fans, this was a wonderful return to form for the series, even if it didn't do much to innovate it. Number 4. Spyro 2 – Season of Flame game was simply trying to find solid ground for Spyro to stand on. With Spyro 2 Season of Flame, Spyro managed to find a successful home on the Game Boy Advance. Boasting colorful and detailed visuals, Season of Flame was a tremendous improvement over its predecessor. The controls were tighter, environments were more diverse, and there were more challenges that made completing the game worthwhile. Despite the hiccups of the first game, Season of Flame proved to be a must-have for GBA owners. <laughs> Number 3. Spyro 2 – Ripto's Rage You didn't think we'd forget about the games from the PS1, did you? Spyro 2 – Ripto's Rage was a terrific sequel, releasing a year after the first Spyro game. In addition to better graphics and a fantastic soundtrack, the game put our skills to the test with its increased difficulty and extensive list of collectibles to find. Ripto's Rage also expanded upon the gameplay by adding in side missions and new moves for Spyro to use. For Spyro fans that craved a harder game, they found solace in Ripto's Rage. Number 2. Spyro the Dragon It's the game that introduced Spyro to the world. When the monstrous Narsty Nork overhears the dragons talking smack about him, he transforms them into crystal statues, leaving Spyro to rescue his friends. Despite its age, Spyro the Dragon is still one of the most unique games ever made, with its colorful worlds, excellent music, and creative level designs. It also provided an experience that wasn't too easy nor too challenging, allowing players young and old to enjoy it. The game may not have given Spyro as many moves as future titles would, but Spyro the Dragon is remarkable in its technical achievements and simple gameplay. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt Phoebe here. I just wanted to say real quick that Spyro the Dragon should have been number one. I don't care what Andrew says, I don't care what Ricky says, and I don't care what Jess says. They were wrong. Anyway, I'm really excited for the remaster coming out soon, and if you head over to Mojo Plays, we have a whole history of the franchise and a review coming out, so check it out. Number one, Spyro, Gear of the Dragon. What a way to end a trilogy as magnificent as this. Spyro Year of the Dragon took everything that made the first two games fantastic and expanded upon them. Levels were bigger and rich with detail, minigames were incredibly enjoyable, and the multiple playable characters kept the gameplay fresh and exciting. We also can't forget the excellent soundtrack that Stuart Copeland delivered, which some fans regard as the best between the original Spyro games. With a game as fun as this, 2000 certainly was the Year of the Dragon, and we can't wait to revisit it in the Reignited Trilogy. Ah. 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.